Welcome to part two of episode 25. Now, after the last couple of weeks, you'll see that my tea to green is much improved. And even though we've been still working on that with Jane, I've decided to use the second half of my lesson and the second part of the show to work on some putting. Putting. <laughs> Sorry, what? Putting. <laughs> Things can be so complicated, but they don't need to be. Well, I've, again, because I did a lot of work on putting at the start of the year, I had a few wee revelations and like things I'd never thought of before with putting. So I was sort of like, right, so literally all you got to do is pick the line you want, start it on that line and that's get the it. weight right. Line in place. That's, it. that's all whatever it's it two, is. It's literally two things, isn't it? I remember watching... Green reading I take as a separate thing. So literally in terms of, yeah. in terms of hitting the putt, it's... Start like, it on the right line and hit it the right absolutely. way. Absolutely. That's right. I mean, it's, it is that simple. Well, when you're putting well, and we've, we all get that, that time where it's just like, ooh, it's starting to happen, yeah. you know? You line up your putt, right? And what you'll see a lot of players do, you know, they've taken their line, they'll, they'll be looking at the hole, and then down to the ball, and then boom, in it goes. Ah, just... Now, when you're not putting well, what happens? You have a look, look, and then everything is based here. You know, you're worrying about what this looks like, what that looks like, uh -huh. and that's a disaster. Let's have a wee look at the wee ones first of all. So, when we're, when we're this close, th this really can highlight all sorts the of actual issues. stroke. Yeah, well this, is, this has been a wee troublesome of the last couple of weeks. Um, where like, again, not that long ago, I was just stepping up and banging them yeah. in for fun. You know, I couldn't miss from this range. I was like so super confident. I would literally just sort of like, this was a gimme. See that, you just hit the nail on the head, super confident. Ah, oh absolutely, yeah. literally. I mean, there's nothing worse than standing over this going, oh, I've missed the last three, I've missed the last three, I've missed the last three. Yeah, that's good. It was, you know, as I said, certainly, I did a lot of um, Phil Kenyon drills that I found. I can't remember, I signed up to something or other and it was like a five day thing where it was like, right, day one we're concentrating on the grip, day mm -hmm. two we're concentrating, so I just kind of worked through that for a long time. Right. And I was putting through these cups at 19 inches away um, to give me a gate, because I didn't have oh, a gate okay. or whatever, and it was that, apparently I think that gave me one degree of um, error in my line. Right. So if I was putting to five feet and then I had these cups 19 inches away or something mm -hmm. like that, um, if I hit the cup, it meant that was more than one degree off right. my target line. That's good, yeah. Okay. So I did that for a long time and kind of felt like I was like, okay, cool, got, you know, kept stats on it and everything, got really quite a high percentage of just at least starting it online. Mm -hmm. I think certainly that, I think, I think my foundations are fairly decent mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, I know how I, yep. how I grip the club and I, you know, I kind of yep. get in my position and, and, and all that. Um, and I think my stroke's mostly okay. Yeah, well, what I've seen so far is very good. We to keep out. That's because I've just said how good it is. That was nothing more than that. Would you say that if you do miss a putt from this distance, does it tend to be left? Well, that's another thing with the cups, is you keep a, a note of which cup you hit. Uh -huh. um, I wouldn't say that it was consistently left. Oh, okay. I would say that I do push some as well. Right. Um, but it tends to be. I don't know actually. I, I certainly do both. And that right. was that was the stats in January as well. Right. Was that um, I think m predominantly yes. Thinking back on it, I did. It was far more left than, than right. Right, but it's good. Ooh, got away with it. Yeah. You know, years ago. Now this would be way back in the eighties when the the the, bread, the open uh -huh. was at uh, Muirfield. Right. And I was working down there with Jimmy Hume and David Hush. And just so happened as I was coming out of the tent, who was on the putting green? Seve. Right, just before he was going out onto the... <laughs> and you know how he finished his practice? And I couldn't believe this. I'd never seen it before. I've probably never seen it since, but I never... <laughs> well, Seve was one would, of a kind. It would be... He was only about maybe this far away from the hole. Yeah. And he finished his putting practice just with a follow through. Every time. Thinking, what the heck is that all about? And it and it highlighted. I thought, that's all. That's what that's what putting is. Is just getting from there to there. What else happens when you're nervous, 
And let's face it, we all get nervous. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. You know, if you're focusing on the, 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 the line of the ball, especially from this distance, I hate that exercise because I know if I'm going to miss it, it's going to go left. Right. That's always been my problem. Yeah. Left. Um, but if I take my time and do some exercise like this, so much easier, so much better. So what, you know, and what I'd like to do as well, see what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, it's a funny, I don't know, it's just because you've not got that impact yeah. moment that you're going for, because yeah. you're actually trying to like There we go, perfect, that, yeah. You, and I mean, that, so that's how he finished his putting exercise and I thought, oh gosh, I've never seen that before. I feel like that quite encourages me that like, I sometimes find when I'm putting and I kind of get to a wee point if I'm not really sure what I'm mm -hmm. doing, sometimes I feel that I need to kind of really think about like lifting up my left shoulder right. almost to make sure that I yeah, keep my club work. head on. Yeah, on. Yep, that's good. What I tend to do as well is very similar. Is you know I'll, I'll focus in front of the ball. Although my eyes are on the ball, my peripheral yeah. vision will look in front. So I'm trying to get the ball and the putter over the point that I've picked in front of the ball. I've tried that. It didn't work, Jim. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's this? You make me great now. <laughs> um, the number of times when you're putting bad, you really notice what's happening back here. And that's what yeah. puts you off. Hundred percent. I mean, especially when you kind of get in the position, you're sort of going right. Okay, and you're like, is my takeaway? Because like, yep. my head will go with the club. Yep. And then I'll come back, and then it'll possibly go with the club on the way through as yep. well. Um, so again, another thing. Recently, I mean, the beautiful thing about these putts is you can see everything in your peripherals anyway. So you can't yeah. just do that. Spieth, doesn't he? He looked at the hole. Uh -huh. Does he still do that? He, well, he's. He, I don't know if he's still doing it, but he was doing this thing for a long time where he looked at the hole. So yeah. He would, you know, he went. I mean, okay, fair enough, only this distance, but he'd do that. And it'd be, I again, can't. the same sort of thing that you do if you're playing yeah. darts. Could you? you, know, you could you, I can't do that. Can well, the thing is, if you're playing darts, you wouldn't do that. that. Exactly. Exactly. You would look at the... Or if you're attempting bowling, you know, yeah. you, you, you're throwing it to where yeah. your eyes are telling your body where it puts it. Um, and I think it's Sergio not doing something at the moment where he's closing his eyes. Really? I'm sure I've heard... I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure I've heard this thing of, like, Sergio's doing all his setup and I've been getting, right. like, getting into position and then literally closing his mm -hmm. eyes. So. Well, it's not the easiest putt because we're going uphill. Well, it's uphill and then downhill, so that's the thing. Yep. I left one short and then that one's going to... Okay. I mean, again, in theory, all I'm trying to do is um, the exact same thing as before, but... Yeah, well, there we go. You've got, you've got the line, now we're going to need the pace. And the hole never comes to the ball. The ball's got to go to the hole. Okay, nice. Tap in from that distance, we'll take that. Yeah, yeah. So what I would tend to do, see for this type of putt, if yep. you get yourself on a relatively flat, flatter, right? Yep. If you have ten golf balls, you might have already done this. You set yourself a challenge. Out of ten, you must hold two. Right. Um, if you're short, you've got to start again. Okay. Nothing has to be short. You've got to, right? And you would place a coin or a tee about a foot and a half behind the hole yeah okay so you're allowed one rogue ball that can go past the tee but the rest if missed have to stay between the hole and the tee okay if you go beyond obviously you start again if you've got done it twice every time you're short you start again sounds like a long day button well you set yourself a target it might even be one ball you start with the hole and the rest have got to be past the hole but not too far past uh -huh. See if you do that consistently and do it two or three times a week. See by the time you're playing on the course and you're having a 20 foot putt. You've got the weight in your head. You know what? You tend to think, I can hold this. There was a girl, um, Vary Mackay. Don't know her. I'm going back into the late 90s. Right. And um, she, she turned professional. She was a very good player. She, 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 um, Getting it either, is it? Oh, she was one of the first Scots to go to Stanford. She was right. at the same time as uh, Tiger. Okay, nice. Right? Yep. And what she did, she'd have a wee metronome and she'd set up the metronome. That was one of the things that. Um, and I had, Kenyan again, had. that was, yeah, and I thought, well, and I mean, she was perfect every time. What a player she was. Well, that was something, that was another thing Phil Kenny said that I found a wee bit not bizarre. I mean, in theory, I suppose it makes perfect sense, but it was, uh, he was basically saying you take. So you're putting stroke rhythm should always be the same. So is that metronome tick mm -hmm. top, 
tick tock, whatever it is. And if it's a longer putt, obviously you need a longer swing, mm -hmm. but you still have to be back there, so it's going to be mm -hmm. longer and faster. So instead of being tick tock, it's going to be tick tock. So mm -hmm. the, thing, the only thing that changes is the length of your swing mm -hmm. and the, the rhythm's the same because the rhythm yeah because your tempo or your rhythm is the same that you've got to be back there in time mm -hmm. yes you'll be faster so you can't sort of go oh it's a long part i'm going to do you know and try and yeah and all, all that sort of thing so it was literally he was keeping as many things constant and then the only thing that changed was the length of your back swing yeah. really no that that's interesting because there was one time uh, paul laurie was here and he was talking about when he played in the it was on the radio actually and he was playing in the uh the Ryder Cup uh -huh. and his putting wasn't as good as it normally is and somebody had said you know it's just the rhythm because you're normally quite a you know tick you know quite tick a fast yeah, rhythm yeah. and because the greens were really slow he was trying to be slow he was, really it, and he wasn't doing it deliberately because ah. the greens were yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry the greens were fast so he was slowing down and he says when he, when he just went back to his normal speed he started holding putts again my brother keeps mentioning this one I don't know where he got it from but it was talking about the, the year that Greg Norman collapsed um, and Faldo won the Masters. Oh gosh, I. But no, but what, what he was saying is that they, now with the technology they had, they looked at back at all the footage and stuff, and he said that the first three days of Greg Norman's swing, like mm -hmm. full swing tempo, was like the same, it's the same, it's the same. You know, on the third, on the fourth day, it was either faster or slower. So he was literally he was speeding up and mm -hmm. he was trying to slow it down mm -hmm. or whatever. But it was just he was he was all over the shop in terms yeah. of not keeping his rhythm as it had been for the first three days. Whereas Faldo was day one, day two, day three, mm -hmm. day four, same. always the same. Well, it's interesting, I'm playing a game, I'm playing a match shortly. So because of the new handicap system, not because I'm any better, although I did get slightly cut after the other day, um, because of the new handicap system, whereas I, I'm now 12 point whatever it is, or it's actually 11 point something now, but it would still be playing handicap of 13 at Richmond. All right. And it's always been 12 and above is what I call the diddy scratch. Right. And then there's the, the sort of actual scratch for our stage golf society. Um, but they're now doing it just on handicap index. So although my playing handicap at Richmond is still 13 and hasn't actually changed because they're doing it on handi world handicap system and it's 12 point something, I now automatically go into the lower one. So right. I'm now playing in the proper scratch. No offense to the diddy, so I was a diddy. Um, You're a big boy I'm now. a big diddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've got to play in that and I've drawn arguably one of the best, or certainly certainly one of the best, but arguably the best um, player in the society who I played last year in a different competition. Um, just so steady, like a metronome, mm -hmm. literally just like bang, hits the fairway, bang, either hits the green or he's close by, puts it close, gets his par, moves on. Not the longest, he'll always say that himself, he's always like, you know, I can't hit it as far as you, but he doesn't have That's to, master, because he yeah. just goes bang, bang, his short game's brilliant. Um, and so I just thought like, all right, okay, well I'm just like, I'm going to look, I'm going to get humped, so Actually, it's just going to it, be... Actually, it'll inspire you, because, you know, I think when you're playing with somebody better, it always brings you up. Up a bit. It really does. Well, listen, I, I'm just going to, you know, at the end of the day, I know that he's going to be steady as get out. Yeah. And the thing is, what he says, because he's quite pally with Gary Wilson home, he's how I got Gary on my channel a wee while back. And he's just sort of saying he doesn't play match play really he doesn't think about what the other guy's doing he's like if i get you know he kind of sets his target for the hole mm -hmm. he goes right okay i'm looking to get a, a, a par here and then that means the other guy's got to get a par mm -hmm. simple as that and he doesn't he doesn't worry about okay if i'm in the rough kind of thing he's going okay well you know i can probably get away with the bogey he doesn't mm -hmm. he's just, i'm getting a par mm -hmm. and he's, he's very very good at that mental side of the game and just like right i'm going to do what i do whatever he does is up to him yes but i certainly and when i'm playing this i'm going to be going right I'm not going to beat him over 18 holes, but how many holes can I actually win mm -hmm. to keep it respectable? You know what I mean? So I was like, I do have the length. So as long as I'm striking the ball okay, yeah. then at par fives and stuff, you could argue, don't go for it mm -hmm. and try and make sure you get the par and maybe get half or whatever. Or it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of oh, match, mental uh, fun the, to be had. Absolutely, the match play. Well, the thing is, in match play, a bogey can win the hole. In, ma in match play, <laughs> I've played many a match play you where know? an eight can win the hole. There you go, you only need to be one shot better than your well, opponent. Well that's the thing, but I mean, that, whereas, whereas that's how I would be thinking of it, and just going right, it doesn't matter um, if I make the part, mm -hmm. if I've got two for it, I'm going to lag it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So Jane seems fairly happy with my putting, I just need to be a bit more confident perhaps, we shall see how it works out in the next few weeks. Till next time, be good, and if you can't, shout four. <laughs> <laughs> Take thousand <laughs>